Do the moon. Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. We can't see on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. Mirage. What's going on, everyone? It's Jaron from Jaronism back with another video for you today. Should be a short one as I am asking the question Is theoretical physics actually pseudoscience? Seems easy enough, but I don't want to simply tell you the answer. I'm sure you know my opinion, but rather I will provide you with the evidence and then allow you to formulate your own opinion or your own answer to the question. So let's get started. First, what is theoretical physics? Well, theoretical physics uses math and theory in order to come up with or derive the fundamental laws of nature and to make conclusions from these laws. Yep, ideas and mathematics giving little to no weight to experiments or observations. Sounds fun, huh? Books have been written and questions have been asked because to some it has become obvious that physics has been stuck for years because the belief in beauty and math have become so dogmatic that it now conflicts with scientific objectivity. That a focus on mathematical elegance rather than reality has led the so-called science astray. It reminds me of a quote from Nikola Tesla who of course was a real scientist, not a theoretical physicist, who said, the scientists from Franklin to Morse were clear thinkers and did not produce erroneous theories. The scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Nikola Tesla. Things like dark matter, string theory, the Big Bang, quantum gravity, relativity, and so much more have all come from the minds of theoretical physicists. Let's list some of these theoretical physicists because maybe you've heard of some of them. Nicholas Copernicus, who formulated the Copernican principle that the Earth or human beings could not possibly be in a privileged position in the universe. Or Giordano Bruno, who told us that the stars are just like other suns. Or Galileo Galilei, who pushed the ideas of heliocentrism. Or Johannes Kepler, who came up with mathematical laws of planetary motion, or Isaac Newton, whose cannon-shooting thought experiment gave rise to gravity, or Christian Huygens, who in 1653 came up with the distance from Earth to the Sun when he guessed, yes, guessed, they say correctly by chance, the size of Venus, allowing him to measure the Earth to the Sun distance, or Father George Lemaitre, the Jesuit, who came up with the idea of the Big Bang, or Henry Cavendish, who used balls in his shed to correctly come up with the mass and weight of the Earth, or Max Planck, who was the originator of the quantum theory, or Albert Einstein in relativity and the bending of space-time, to more recently Lawrence Krauss, who tells us that something can come from nothing if you have gravity, or Michu Kaku, who tells us all about string theory. Of course, there are thousands more. To see a pretty decent list, check out the link in the description to Wikipedia where you can see the many other names like Stephen Hawking, Richard Feynman, Ernst Mach, Max Born, Ernest Rutherford, James Clark Maxwell, the list goes on and on. But I want to come back to one in particular to help us answer our question, and that is Michu Kaku. In a recent interview, Michu Kaku said the following. Now listen carefully, as I believe he gives us the answer pretty much straight up. You're not going to believe this. In science, we always say that you make observations, you have a theory, you go make more observations, and it's a very, very tedious process. Wrong. Nobody that I know of in my field un uh, uses the so-called scientific method. In our field, it's by the seat of your pants. It's leaps of logic. It's guesswork. In that quote, I believe we find our answer. He said, plain as day, that nobody that he knows of in his field and his field is theoretical physics, uses the so-called scientific method. Why is that so important? Well, it is so important because when we look at the definition of pseudoscience, we see clearly and everywhere that by definition, pseudoscience is a collection of beliefs or practices mistakenly regarded as being based on the scientific method. Yes, pseudoscience consists of statements, beliefs or practices that are claimed to be both scientific and factual but are incompatible with the scientific method. One more time, in case you missed it, from Michu Kaku himself. Wrong. Nobody that I know of in my field un uh, uses the so-called scientific method. And when you don't use the scientific method, what you practice is no longer called science. It's simply called pseudoscience. 
In our field, it's by the seat of your pants. It's leaps of logic. It's guesswork. 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 Just great. And do some research on the difference, and you will see what we are being fed as factual and reality is simply guesswork. This chart shows the characteristics of pseudoscience versus actual science. Pseudoscience avoids falsifiability. It has vagueness in measurement. It takes what is unproven as false equals true. It has confirmation bias. It spends money and resources without care and has a reversed burden of proof. Hmm. Sounds a lot like the Big Bang. Universe expansion, dark matter, relativity, space-time, black hole science, unification theory, the theory of everything, supersymmetry, string theory, gravity, and on and on the list goes. So next time you hear these theoretical physicists talking nonsense, make sure you remember that the evidence speaks for itself. But it's up to you to decide. Is theoretical physics pseudoscience? I think the answer is clearly yes. Or you can continue to believe these guys and take the things they say as fact, like when we asked Michu Kaku to explain string theory. Because we have a theory called string theory. It is fantastic. It is incredible. It has astounded the world of mathematics and physics. And now you can't move in the physics world without bumping into somebody who wants to talk about the 10th dimension, the 11th dimension, the multiverse, hyperspace, time travel. All the things that were once considered science fiction are now centerpiece in our understanding of the nature of everything. Yes, the 11th dimension, the multiverse, hyperspace, and time travel, things that are so clearly science fiction, are now centerpiece in our understanding of reality. <laughs> uh huh. Or when someone asks Lawrence Krauss how the universe was created from nothing, and he gives this answer. What is, what is, let, let me just give a one minute answer because it's a, it's a, a long question. What is remarkable is that stuff, is that, you know, to create stuff, it sounds like you need stuff. And to create and the conservation of energy, you would think, and this is one of the arguments often used, conservation of energy means you can't start with nothing and have a universe with something. But what is amazing is when you add gravity into the mix, a miracle occurs, but a natural miracle. That, that gravity allows negative energy as well as positive energy configurations. And you can create, for example, two particles out of nothing. Now they have energy because of their rest mass. But if the gravitational field they're in is strong enough, the gravitational potential energy attracting them together is so strong and negative that the sum total of those two bits of energy can be precisely zero. And you can create those particles with impunity. And in fact, that happens, we think, near black holes. And in fact, it will happen in empty space. And so in fact, uh, to create stuff, you don't need stuff. You just need nothing. And, and in this case, quantum mechanics. Well, then you'll know that the reason these answers don't make any sense at all is because they are nothing more than pseudoscientific junk, period. Of course, you're free to your own opinion. Maybe you have a different answer, but when somebody asks me, is theoretical physics actually pseudoscience? The easy answer is yes. Last thing is, I don't want to give Michu Kaku too bad of a time because as time goes on, he's actually figuring it out a little bit. This quote he gave actually makes me feel a little bit better that some of these guys do see the light at the end of the tunnel. He said, I've concluded that we are in a world made by rules created by an intelligence. Believe me, everything that we call chance today won't make sense anymore. To me, it is clear that we exist in a plan which is governed by rules that were created, shaped by a universal intelligence and not by chance. Hmm. Imagine that. So thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to subscribe for more like it click that thumbs up and to share this video. As always, I remind you to do your own research because when you do, you'll never again believe what you've been taught. Till next time, this has been Jaronism. Peace. <laughs>